Hey, what's up? Welcome to the Max Revenue Show. My name is Micah Salas. I am your host. This is our special series we are calling Diary of a New Producer, where we give you a look behind the curtain into the life of a new producer. His name we're calling Ian Cognito is starting from scratch and he's trying to build a million dollar plus book of business. I'm his mentor. Obviously, I'm also your host here today. If you missed the previous 15 weeks, go check them out. Every single week is different, right? We talk not just numbers, like here's how many calls he made or whatever. We actually get into specific things that we covered in our weekly coaching calls that I think you will find extremely helpful. Topics range everything from cold calling all the way to first meetings, due diligence, you know, how, anything you can think of. So this week, what we've covered, and three things I wanna to talk to you guys about. Discovery calls, uh, return on commission, and something called completes. All right, so let's get into this, folks. Thanks for joining us. All right. Discovery calls. This is the part, if you don't know the max revenue process, what we what we preach here is you have your first cold call. You set a first meeting. The first meeting is not a discovery call, really. It's really just a quick 15-minute meeting to go high level to figure out where they're at today, where they're trying to get to, um, what they've done in the past from an insurance buying process, and then briefly explain how the insurance game works and what other people are doing to beat the game, right? And that's the due diligence process. So that's really all that first meeting is. And then they decide, yes, I wanted, to, I want you to do due diligence or no, it's not really a good fit. I was just looking for a quote, right? That's meeting one. Okay. And then you have the final meeting to come back and present all the due diligence. But in between the final meeting and meeting one is something called a discovery call. Very familiar if you're, if you've ever sold software, obviously. Um, but ours is ran a little bit differently, right? It's very specific for insurance. The discovery call is so important because this is where you're gonna peel back the layers on different things related to their company's overall risk, right? And what objectives they're trying to achieve and uh, what's holding them back from that, right? And it's so important also because a lot of times you might not find anything wrong with their policies, right? It might be totally fine. Their pricing might be in line, but maybe there's some pains that they're having. So Ian and I were talking and he has a nice prospect he's working on, probably 50, 60 in revenue. And they brought up some pains, right? Some of their pains like, hey, it takes up to three weeks to hear back when we send in a, an MVR request. Um, I never hear anything around the renewal. Our EMR is 1.7. We've never been shown any ideas. But the CFO he's talking to doesn't really feel a ton of pain. He's just kind of sharing that this is what's happening. And so in that discovery call, uh, when this came up with Ian, he asked some okay follow-up questions, but I really stressed to him the importance of digging deeper to actually quantify this pain. And now don't, don't be so quick to go try to sell and solve the pain on that discovery call, but the data that you collect and the, the information you're gathering when this person's talking is what you're gonna use in your final presentation to then hopefully use as your ammo, right? And close the deal. And so um, there's, the questioning framework that I like to dig deeper is spin, right? And it's just talking about like, okay, what's the current situation? What's the problem? What's the impl impl implication if you don't solve that problem? So let's say in Ian's situation, he had this MVR is taking three weeks and it's like, okay. So they, they tell you that, hey, it takes three weeks to get our MVRs. Okay, so what's the impact of that on your business? How is that impacting you guys? That would be first question. They respond. And then it might be like, hey, what if you guys don't solve this, I guess, what would that do long term or what would that look like? Right. So that's the kind of framework. I'm not going to get into all the spin questions. Just go Google spin questioning and you can see some really good examples. And so I, I have a list of them. I pulled them, sent them to Ian and um, and I use them myself. He has them. And I think it's just really good. You got to peel back the layers. And the whole point of all this is... Um, I think our biggest competition as insurance agents is not the other agent, even the incumbent agent. It's really complacency. There's a, the bar is very low, but the problem is there's a there's a cost of changing, right? There's a risk associated with changing agents, and sometimes it's like, hey, the the devil I know is better than the devil I don't know in your prospect's mind, and so it's important for us to peel back those layers and then to quantify what those problems are actually. Uh, costing the business and then this gets into bullet point number two I, I told you what I wanted to hit on today which is return on commission 
And um, this is very important to bring up at your final presentation. You need to have a part in there where you, of course, you're talking about the due diligence, what I found from the coverage, the pricing, maybe the market situation. But then it's the, the part of like, hey, if we were hired as your broker, here's what we would do to position your risk most effectively and to, to make outcomes optimal for your business, right? And that's where you say, hey, you guys are paying $50,000 in commission. When you share this with people, some people might not even understand it or know it because it's baked into the premium, right? They know they're probably getting some commission on it, but they didn't quantify it in their head. So it's so important that you have to quantify it for them on paper or whatever. So you put that out there to them. And then you, this is the part of the presentation, I guess you could say, where you basically talk exactly to the problems that they're having. You know, they addressed, maybe it's the top two or three. Hey, you, your MVRs are taking three weeks. Here's a, a process I would put in place for you. You'd get, you know, MVRs checked in two, three days, blah, 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 right? Your EMR is a 1.7. Hey, here's what your lowest possible mod is, or we would calculate that if we're hired, and then we would put in a two, three year action plan to get you there, right? So you see how that, that starts to change things up. Now the buyer is starting to think like, okay, man, I'm paying $50,000 in commission. I could be paying it to this guy or I could be paying it to the other guy who's not doing any of this stuff, has never talked to me about any of this stuff. And so that's how you win accounts where you don't find stuff, but there has to be some pain there. But to get to make it painful, you have to get them to understand how much they're paying for this, right? Because it's, it's not like their broker's necessarily costing them more money potentially. They could be, right? But a lot of times they're not. And so you got to show them how they're not getting the, the return on the commission they're paying, right? And um, that's why I just like to use that, that phraseology. Um, okay, so the next and really last thing I want to talk about from this week is something called completes. Now, this is something I've inherently kind of just done, but I was reading a book. I've talked about this before, Sales Superpowers. Go check it out if you haven't. Justin Michael um, read his second book as a follow-up to that. It was an ebook. And, you know, he was kind of saying, hey, metrics, how should you base yourself? Did you have a good week, bad week? Are you able to hit your numbers? And he said, hey, you, get, you should really focus on completes, which ultimately just means, are you having conversations with decision makers? And a conversation could be a phone call. He talks a lot about using LinkedIn and messaging. And he's like, if you get a, uh, maybe a two, three, four reply, you know, back and forth response going on Messenger, that counts as a, a complete um, back and forth on an email, but those are completes. So he actually recommends, I think, 20 to 25 completes a week if you want to really do well. And I would say I agree with that, right? And it was like, it was like, oh, you know, it kind of was, I guess you say, confirmation that what, what I'm doing does make some sense. This guy sold multiple millions of dollars, worked for LinkedIn, all these big SaaS companies. But that's the whole framework. If I reverse engineer um, my 200 calls a week, which I tell you guys, that's really the ultimate goal. That should lead to approximately 20 conversations, right? Because I know it takes 10 phone calls to have one conversation with a decision maker. If you're doing 40 calls a day, that should be four conversations. Monday through Friday, times that by four times five is 20. There you go. That's how you get to your 20 completes. So you can focus on, you know, you can focus on the calls if you want, the talking, you know, the conversations, whatever, whatever, <laughs> takes doesn't really matter the whole point is you got to be having conversations with people so figure out a way to do that and i think it'll bode well for you so that's all i got for you this week if you like this channel give us a thumbs up support us we appreciate it check us out on all their platforms linkedin twitter um and uh, good luck out there